So here are um, the printouts that I got done at the printer. So it's on thick card. So what I'm gonna do is cut them and take them into the shop. And I think they look quite good actually. Um, and basically, right, I'm gonna put this down because this is really awkward. Let's see. Just gonna put my selfie razor up a bit. There we go, sort of like that. And just to make sure that I don't push this over, just get that angle. Right, so I've got these and I'm gonna cut them in a minute. Um, so I've got different designs done. And once I cut them, I'm gonna put holes in them. I have a tool for this and they look so good. And I've been meaning to do this a lot earlier and I didn't do it, so which was not good because I didn't understand if I needed to get them as stickers. So these look really good. Oh my goodness. I don't even know what to say. Hmm, I might do prints of these on these kind of cards actually. I like the way they look. They don't look too bad. But anyway, it's a different conversation. Um, but I'm gonna do um, a time lapse of me cutting these and prepping them. And I'll just do one sheet each. I did um, three, three different designs and two of them each so let's see just make sure that they're all different this one's different from this one it's different from this one so i'm gonna get these cut so i'll just set up and do that now that kind of um, gives, kind of rounds off the edges on uh, corners of like images. So I'm thinking these are quite sharp and if it's supposed to be scarves that I'm putting these on, I don't really want that to be too um, sharp because then it might actually end up making it, um, scratching it and pulling it. Um, so I'm going to round it off like this with all of them. So I've cut them all and curved all the corners so that I'm going to take this into the shop when I'm going as well. So I'll just put it beside, um, I'll just put these beside these pieces I'm taking into the shop and then let's see, I'm going to just take this away. I did um, the other day and they're still drying but I keep forgetting and putting things against them so I'm just checking that this is 
a very firm now actually so I could if I wanted go back in and start doing some more work on them but I'm not going to do that I want to do some other painting just want to leave these alone and play with them once they're dry um, there's so many things I could go back and do like um, just smooth them a bit more and all sorts of things but I want to see what they like. I like the rustic mix. I like, I like texture on my work. So I want to be true to myself, and I'll see how they go as um, I work with the clay. So I had this out today because I wanted to. Actually, I was going to paint another one here, but I'll just show you what I painted um, yesterday. So I worked on this piece yesterday and um i really like the greens that i've added to this um and it was a lot of fun painting this uh so i did this one and it's got a lot of texture in it there's like i don't know if you can see the bumps there um so i really like the result of this one and the greens um let's see i've got two more i wanted to show you um, this one as well, I like the way that I've put these greens on here and um, I didn't do the drips like I usually do for this one, I'm still thinking about it because for some of my work I'm trying to see if I can simplify things a lot and then not have too many things possibly distracting them but I might still come back and still put the drips on these on because to me part of that is a story as well actually so I think I might come back and do that. And I've got one more. Um, this blue one here that I also did yesterday. Um, and I used that, like this green here. I mean, this blue, Prussian blue, that's what I think is the darkest blue on this. And, um, and used some of this green, which is like a lime green. And also, um, I use this cobalt teal as well in some areas so I really like the way that um, it's come out and the drip working I worked wet on wet so that's the idea so I always use this my spray bottle which I'm gonna have handy here because I'm just gonna get some water and then I will start on this piece that I sketched out um, so get some water. So I have um, my brushes here in water and I use this uh, liner brush and this flat brush. Um, this is a size 12. Uh, so those were the two I was using yesterday for these other ones. But what I want to try is actually uh, work on a piece that I'll be using browns. So I have a whole load of paints here that I want to use on this. I'm just going to get straight into it. So this is like unbleached titanium. What's this one? Parchment. So there's some light colors bronze oxide uh, I want to use this one as well um, what's this one what's the color on this Quinine, I can never say this quinacridone gold hue um, what's this one this is red oxide this is an oxide one uh, I've got di dioxas and purple and this cadmium red which I could introduce into the browns at some point and I have here let's see this is burnt sienna and burnt umber as well so I want to work with the browns because I'm looking at the neutral colors that I want to introduce into my palette and for these tags I am I'm, I've started trying to figure out working um, basically the top half quite light and the lower half darker so what I'm gonna do is start on this lower um, actually I'll start on the stack because what else I've noticed is that I want to start um, 
making the stags first and then working on other areas. So I'm going to start in the stag because that helps to temper what I'm doing with the rest of it. I'm going to use the diaxazin purple first and introduce the really dark color in there. So if you can see that. See my if I switch this light off and start and paint with this and see what we've got. So so I'm just gonna sketch this out roughly and it can change at any point. So and just get this overall shape in. And then um, I'm going to start working on other areas as well. So this canvas actually was, um, I've done other artwork on this canvas before and it's very textured. So those designs are going to come out in this as well. I'm going to go in and start using this burnt umber. I'm going to squirt some out here on my cardboard. So I've been working either light to dark or dark to light, depends on what's left on my brush. I'm just gauging it as I go along. So I've still got that purple on this and I'm just going to go in. Actually, I've just noticed something that I usually do these days, which is starting to wet my canvas because that allows the movement of paint to flow quite well into each other. So I'm going to start doing that. And I paint the sides as well when I'm doing this so not just so what I want to do also is I work all this dark in and then I pull it back to light and then I work more dark in and because I want to use all the different browns I have here I'm going to go into burnt sienna as well I can open it up just remember that I should yep definitely be wearing my apron so I'm just going to get that because I think I've left it out of this room. I'll be right back. Right. I always forget my... Um, apron which is quite risky because it will definitely get messy so right I was trying to get out burnt sienna do I have to go that dark I think what I'll do actually is try the red oxide instead because I want to mix the colors and see some difference so I'm just gonna put my sleeves up here as well so I like this jumper I don't want to get it messy If you ever see my peach jumper underneath, that's because that's, um, I always layer my clothing, so that's one of my favorites to keep me warm. Don't like to be cold. So I've just added this oxide, and then I'll go over the sides as well again. So you can see it's over on the side here. And then I'm kind of seeing which one I think is lighter, or darker, blending it in to the other side and it depends on what's on your brush I'm learning more and more that if I don't have that much on my brush of one color I can kind of introduce it into the next color and have a difference in like a mixed tone which is fun to create and blend into so this looks very dark but I will pull it back a bit and so now I'm using the what is this again? The bronze yellow. So I'm just introducing that and you can use this, the colors to shape your other colors. So this is all still wet at the top there. I don't mind if they're bleeding into each other. You go over again and 
it adds to the actual painting because then you're taking the same colors around the rest of the painting into the sides so what i'll do after all this is sometimes usually i'll come in with white but I won't do that right now. I'm going to just come in with all the um, titanium, oh no, what is it, parchment or unbleached titanium and start to introduce it into these areas. And the purple is still warm, I mean, it's still wet. So I could actually dry some of this off. Let me see. I could dry some of it off so it's not as wet as that. So I'm just gonna get my, heating tool, my embossing tool that I use for drying. I just use my embossing tool to dry this a little bit. dries really fast anyway compared to like if it was oil or watercolor and things but this would give it like it would dry most of it some of it will still be there even if I add other colors um, not all of it will move around um, so is I can use a smaller brush to work with so I'm gonna get a smaller brush so that I can get in between the antlers with my next color so I've got a round um well it's not a round brush it's like a Philip Philip but or is it and I'm going to just go in here I've just wet it a little bit and I'm going to basically start adding some of these lighter colors in. So I'm going to start with the warmer one, which is the unbleached titanium. So I'll just take off those extras. I'm just going to add it on top of this spot as well. So as I was saying, I want this to be a lot lighter, but I want to introduce warmer colors into the painting. So some of this will still be a bit wet. Some might not be. I can also, I know I just dried it, but <laughs> if I want some of it to start activating again, I can do that. Um, and you go back and forth basically. Rub it on the sides. And some of it is still wet, so you can just mix that round around blend it in. You can see areas that are wetter than others so okay, so this area here I can mix it completely in because um, it's already cut off from the antler so I might as well just use that as a background. You can always paint over again colors if you paint too much over them. So this is like me just kind of uh, covering some areas and adding to them. So some areas will still be wet. I didn't want it too wet. I want to be able to introduce this and sort of blend it into an almost dry background. So this is where I'm mixing things on the actual canvas. That's what I've been doing a lot of. If I don't think it's wet enough, I'll add some more water. This is quite dry now. Uh, that dried very quickly with that. So as I said, I want it to be lighter, so I am going in. Got some of that purple on there, so I'm just spreading it around. And 
Then I'm just going to pull this down and just start mixing in here. So this has dried quite a bit. If I just want to just go straight over. And I want this stag to stick out, so that's why I'm. This area might still have some wet. Let's do it. this brush is a smaller brush so its strokes are a bit smaller. You can see that when I'm mixing it in here some of the color from the paint underneath is still there so it's still kind of carrying it through. And my brush is mostly dry now but I want this to stick out. And if I don't like it, I'll go back and add some other colors again, but I want to see what this looks like. So most of the brand is now gone. I'm going to add some of that back in in a minute. After I've gone all the way around just to get some other colors in. So yeah, everything's dried on this actually. So what I do is I'm adding, then I take away, then I add, then I take away. Going back and forth and seeing until you have so many layers and then um, they'll start showing through each other. So I'm always trying to go all the way around the canvas. Now you could paint this on an easel, you could paint on an easel, and I do that sometimes, but it's always hard to get underneath like all these areas here because you have to do that and turn your painting upside down and let it dry and it's, you can't be as spontaneous as if as what I'm doing now, which is on the table, and I can go all the way around. So you can see how I've pushed back that brown, but you can tell that there's a color underneath. So what I'm going to do is now start adding this back in again. So I'm going back in to get... I could have waited till this was dry again. Or I could... Um, yeah, I could basically dry it again, actually. Or I can spray it and make it more flow, flowy. Like this. So there'll be more of a mix. So I'm trying to think what colour to introduce next. So could introduce a little bit of the red in next. There's a little red there. Was it red? Let me see. It is cadmium red. It's so bright. I sometimes think it's like an orange or something. So where to put it in? That's the thing. Um, and because I want the darker areas at the bottom, I'm not going to go near the top with this red. I could have done, but I want the darker colors at the bottom. So I'm going to get some more of that ox oxide or the bronze yellow in there in a minute. I'm trying not to stay in one place too long. Just moving around. So you just keep playing with it and not thinking too much. Just thinking, right, I want to... Well, not thinking too much, but just with the idea that you want to mix in these colours somehow and they need to work. Um, so how will they work? So I've added some up here and I'm mixing it in there. So 
I love these ears that give you some of the character of the stack. I've not added any white to this. So you can see what this looks like. Let's add some more of this. I'm going to add some conundrum. I can never see this. It's a red of some sort as well. Conundrum. Oh, wow, I a lot there. So, it's basically what it is like with the red and the browns, isn't it? It's kind of like the same thing. And then you can get very just much thicker when the paints are moving together. start playing with it and with the darker areas and you put thicker layers on and it's just a lot of fun to play with paint. Now when I'm doing all this it's kind of the idea that the background is a landscape that the stag is in. So But we need to be able to see the stag, so I need to go over with, you know, an outline area. And you just keep going and add them and then all the layers will slowly start to work together. So this feels a bit wet here and it's just moving around, not really doing very much. So I am going to probably dry it. And then maybe I should add some white before I do that actually. Just if I can get my white gesso open here. Add some white into this and make some areas lighter. So now it's like some pinks are going to start coming in here because um, of adding that white and the red. I add the red there and I add some white, bringing in some pinks. Just keep adding more white and it will just so smooth and yummy the way that it feels on this and I'm just mixing in the paint over and over again on the actual canvas this feels so good so you go from one color to the other and you can change the way that it is you can dull the colors Added one side to another. It's a lot lighter here. So if I keep adding the white, this air is just going to get lighter and lighter. But I'm mixing in with what is there so that it's not pure white. areas are starting to dry. So 
we can add more um, purple at some point. I'm just kind of trying to feel what I think about all this next to me. some white here. Sometimes it's nice to have those variations in um, colors. So I kind of put that there close and then mix in the rest of it. So you have kind of like an outline. Dark, so I'm gonna try and add some white. So I didn't have any more purple or any other colors added into this, so let's to the brands down here and see what happens. So if I just put some more red in here. I usually spray this a lot, like with a lot of um, water, but these are, I'm just trying to keep it at the minimum. Could always dry it. I'm going to, this purple I like, but I'm going to introduce some of the dark brown in here. So it's trying to decide how high up the muzzle, the area where the stag's nose stops, and then mix it in here. Might actually make some of this quite in its actual body. So the thing with stags is that they are like browns and reds and all sorts of earthy colors and this painting is supposed to be kind of like a neutral painting. And though I have the purple there, I'm trying to to try and get some of the coloring in here. So So it's just mixing it in, moving paint around. I love that purple. So that looks, I really like the way that looks. Let's add some of this in here, some of the purple that I've just taken on my brush.
so let's just go up here. So, it's time to start building this back up. Let's just add some bits here. I'm gonna wash this off. I'm gonna dry it a little bit because um, I like the way it looks, but it's I need to add some more things and it's too wet. as well because there's smells that are coming off this so I have to not be too close when I'm doing that. I'm just going to increase the to look down a bit so you can see what that looks like um, from my neutral colors. I'm sure there's more I could add to this. This is me trying to start using these colors and I should probably let it dry and then come back to this another time. So I'll leave it here like this for now um, and you can have a look at what that looks like. But that's how I slowly start building um, what the background should be like. So you can see all the colors that have been put into this and then what I'll be doing the next time would be trying to consolidate that all together. Um, and see where else I go and I've got that purple underneath that peeks through um, on the face is very deep color and then mixing all the other stuff together but the landscape behind it's still something that I know I'm thinking vegetation a lot of the times when they're green like this one um, but I also want them to I want to suggest trees I want to suggest things and the only way I can do that is like in the texture, you can see here that there's some sort of foliage and plants and crops and uh, nature going on. And then deciding if it's landscapes, if it's dusk, um, if it's a rainy day, a foggy day, misty, all sorts of stuff. If there's like purple in the skies and um, all that kind of ideas I want to play with um, when I'm doing these. So. This is kind of looking at somewhere that would be quite dry, isn't it? I mean, if we're looking at the browns, and or is it like an autumn? So there could be more of the orange and things in the background and areas. So yeah, I think I like that for now for my test experiment. Um, this is what I'm trying to do more of is to collect some colors together and then just use those colors and see what I get out of them. So I might stick with doing a whole series of um, in the browns and see what happens with that and then just work on them to um, a way that I like them. So thank you for joining me for today and I will speak to you in the next studio session.